In continuing our look at some of the goblinoid races, this minute mythology is all about the Hobgoblin. In D&D 5th edition, the Hobgoblin is a lawful evil goblinoid with an AC of 18 and 11 hit points. It has an average passive perception of 10, dark vision, and pretty bad stats across the board, with charisma being its worst. It has a very high AC for a challenge half-creature, making it very hard to hit by low-level parties. It also has a trait called Martial Advantage that lets it add 2d6 damage to any creature hit by its weapon strikes, as long as that creature is within 5 feet of one of its allies. It can strike up close with a sword or far away with a longbow. Both weapons do the same damage, so weapon choice is situational. A hobgoblin in D&D's lore is supposed to be a larger goblinoid with better physique and better intellect than the average goblin. Mechanically, they are meant to be the leaders of a goblin band. Like I mentioned in the last video, goblins can stealth and take the disengage action as a bonus action, making them hit and run or swarming creatures. With a hobgoblin leading them, the strategy changes. I would have the hobgoblin leading a party of goblins who try to surround the party to activate its martial advantage trait. I would begin combat by firing at the PCs from afar, dealing extra damage on the weapon hit if they're being swarmed by the other goblins. As the party is slowly whittled down, or as the goblins are killed by the party, the hobgoblin should charge into battle and take on the rest of the party with his sword. The hope here is that the goblins will slowly overwhelm the players, meanwhile the hobgoblin is taking pot shots at them from afar. Hobgoblins in European mythology and folklore are typically described as small, hairy creatures closely related to brownies, kobolds, and other household spirits. They are a variety on the goblin most commonly attributed to countryside homes in Middle England. Interestingly, a hob is a flat metal shelf at the side or back of a fireplace, perhaps signifying that these types of goblins are friendly home sprites. They enjoy being mischievous, and it is said that a gift of clothing banishes them back to the fairy realm, perhaps the inspiration for Dobby the House Elf in the Harry Potter series. In most European folklore, the hobgoblin is able to shapeshift and is fond of practical jokes, but there is one hobgoblin known for darker fare. The Boogeyman is supposedly an evil hobgoblin goblin in many folktales, but the name and origins vary from culture to culture. In Western Europe, it is theorized that the boogeyman was a Christianization of hobgoblins, a bogey or boogie being a slang name for the devil. Some scholars argue that the boogeyman is not a specific hobgoblin, but another breed entirely. When we compare these myths to Dungeons and Dragons, we find very few similarities. The hobgoblin in myth is a sprite similar to kobolds, goblins, brownies, and other fey creatures, while in D&D, the Hobgoblin is a larger, meaner, smarter goblin that typically becomes the leader of a pack of other goblinoids. They're actually more similar to the Urukai from Lord of the Rings, which makes sense since they were first introduced in the first edition of D&D, which takes tons of inspiration both from folklore and from Tolkien's body of work. If you enjoyed that video, consider giving it a like and giving me a follow. And for more of my videos, you can find me on Twitch at Moglaroo, YouTube at Moglaroo Streams, and TikTok at Moglaroo Streams as well.